c'est vrai. C'est un petit camion, il est bien, il est bien. Hi folks, we're in Manchester today, sharing the gospel and uh, about to preach today, so I uh, pray that God will bless us and be with us. Hi folks, we're here today to share with you about the gospel, about Jesus Christ, that he is the saviour. And I just want to show you the madness of unbelief. You know, you say, well, I don't believe there's a God. I don't believe that there is a God. Well, did you know that all the information in the world is not as much as the information in DNA. That's how much DNA information packs in. No way could a mind, uh, no way could chance produce that DNA. That DNA could have only come by God. It could have only come by a mind. The madness of unbelief. If I was just to put a load of sticks on the floor, how much chance would that write something? If I threw sticks on the floor, would it write anything? No. That is unbelief. But a mind wrote the DNA. A mind produced the DNA. And that mind is God. And God is a holy God. It says, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. God is a holy God. He's a holy God. And because he's a holy God, he has given us the Ten Commandments. Don't lie. Have you ever lied? Have you ever lied? Don't steal. Have you ever stolen? Don't commit adultery. Have you ever committed adultery? Not today. Don't curse the name of God. Have you ever cursed the name of God? We've all made mistakes. And that's why we become guilty. He says, all fall short of the glory of God. You got any questions, sir? All fall short of the glory of God. But God didn't leave it there. God didn't just say, I'll condemn everybody. He had a plan, and that plan was to save people. And he came in Jesus Christ. And it was prophesied that he would be arrested. It was prophesied that he would be taken. It was prophesied that he would die on a cross. It was prophesied that they would crucify him. When he went on that cross, he was dying on that cross for sinners. He hung on that cross and shed his blood. And that is the only way to be reconciled to God. That's the only way to know God. The only way to know God is by that cross. On that cross, Jesus Christ gave his life. On that cross, Jesus Christ died for your sin. He died for your sin on that cross. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? Have you got a question, sir? Yeah, God bless you. Are you Muslim, sir? No. Christian, yeah. Why have you forsaken me? And he hung on that cross and he died as a savior. And we can be reconciled to God. We can know God through that blood. That blood makes the way to heaven. That blood makes the way to God. Without that blood, we're dead. 
Without that blood, we have no hope. Now you might say, Jay, I'm an atheist, and I can prove that your faith is wrong. Prove it. If you're an atheist, come and prove it. I can, I can silence you within one minute if you're an atheist. Come and prove it. If you're an atheist, there is no God. DNA has information in it. Only information comes via a mind. Mind produces information. And in the DNA, there is more information in the DNA than the whole world. That's how much information is in the DNA. It's packed full of information. Who put it there? Who put that information there? It demands an intelligence. An intelligence put the information in the DNA. You could put all the information of the world on a pinhead. That's how much information is in the DNA. That's how powerful it is. We cannot say that we're here by chance. We cannot say we're here by chance. Have you got a question, sir? Do you believe in evolution? Yes. Uh, give me some evidence for evolution. Huh? Okay. Okay. So is that your is that your evidence for evolution? I'll give you some evidence against it. If you can give me some for it. Dinosaur fossils. Okay, dinosaur fossils. What is evolution? What is it? Yeah. Random mutation. Random mutation and natural selection. Yeah. yeah. Now, can chance produce why? If I throw some sticks on the floor right now, what are the chances of those sticks saying, I love you? One in a million. One in a million. So how come, if I threw some sticks on there, and the chances are it won't go, I love you, yeah? But something more complex than that, a sentence, is the DNA in our body. There is more complexity. There is more complexity in the DNA than that simple sentence, and yet that simple sentence could not be created by chance. Do you agree? Well, this depends how you define chance. Okay. Before the beginning of the universe, what existed? Nothing. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's more. Nothing. And when we say nothing, we mean nothing. Yeah. So. Can nothing produce a sentence like, I love you? If there's nothing there, if, if, if there is nothing there, can it produce I, a sentence called, I love you? So, so if there's nothing in the universe, how did, there was nothing, how did it produce something more complex than a sentence called DNA? DNA is three billion bits of information in the DNA, right? So it's infinitely more complex than a simple sentence. And yet, if you're saying there's nothing at the beginning of the universe, and you're saying that nothing could not well, create a sentence... As far as like, physics goes, it's just a type of complex state. We can't understand it. It's a, I mean, it's the, the, the thing is that the, the latest data suggests that it was... Uh, not nothing per se, but like a quantum mechanics string theory, kind of like, you know, kind of chaotic state with I don't know how many dimensions. Who, who's Valencia? Valencia? Yeah. One of the greatest, greatest physicists in the world today. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says that the universe had a beginning. Yeah. Well, it's it had a beginning. If it had a beginning, it's probably it, well, the law of thermodynamics. What's the law of thermodynamics? Uh, the law of thermodynamics shows us that we are the beginning, and that is the main. That is the one of the assured laws that we have. So, if the universe had a beginning, it must have been that there was nothing there. If there was nothing there, how did something come from nothing? You cannot get complexity from nothing, let alone a sentence. But the DNA. So, so, if you're trying to prove the existence of God, God is just an abstraction of something that we can't understand anyway. So, what's the point of trying to? Right. Have you heard of the pre-Socratic philosophers? No. Pre-Socratic philosophers discussed this topic. They said either the universe had a mind or no mind. And throughout this is the centuries, yeah, so throughout the centuries, we've discussed this, and even today, we've not got rid of that question. It's still here. 
So science can answer certain questions, but there are philosophical questions that are still around that will not go away. And it's more intelligent to believe a mind created the complexity of the DNA than chance, than nothing. Maybe, well, well I mean, I believe in the pantheistic notion of God, which is that it's just the universe. So you believe in a God? Yeah, then the pantheistic notion. This pantheistic... Not the, not the, not the uh, Christian not the theology, not the... Yeah, exactly. Not all the, not all the theological, okay. not all the stuff that comes with it. How do you region. know this God? Just from my life experience. People in my life experiences and see the sky at night. It's nature. It's nature. Well, the Bible, the Bible says by nature we can know God. It says God we is can, nature. We can have, we can have some kind of knowledge of God. Nature is God, and God is nature. Okay. Okay. But when you say pantheism, is this, this God personal? Well, in the sense of... Can you have a relationship with this God? In the sense of seeing the nature, yeah. Well, well, nature, yeah. A person, does not a person love and communicate? Well, yeah, a human being as well. So does this, God, nature, does this God, God that you talk about as a pantheist, does this God love and communicate? Yeah, yeah, through people. Through people? Yeah, because so, we are nature. So, so God is nature now? Yeah, it was us. And so there's no difference between God Nature, what to say? Well, yeah, there's things to change the words you want to use that. So, is God a spirit or is God material? If you want to put it in those terms, yeah, it's can I just finish the conversation? Go, go, go. No, 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 he's asking, no, I'm having a conversation with this guy, yeah? You have to, you're saying that God is nature, and I just asked the question, is God spirit? Well, if you want, it depends on it. What, Jesus do, you mean, said, what do you mean by spirit? Well, Jesus, do you mean master, said, Jesus, master Jesus, well, Jesus says we must worship God in spirit and in truth. Yeah. So there's a differentiation between God and nature. Uh, on, the Jesus, on the Jesus point, like, he, was a, he was a great philosopher and a great man. But do I believe he was supernatural? No. And I've read the Gnostics and all the rest of it. I know how kind of, yeah, the, there's the Nag Hammadi, which is the, the true teaching of Jesus, i.e. Like, not like of uh, what century were these rules? You, you read about the, the Hanadi? Yeah, 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 yeah. You read them? Yeah, yeah. Have, you, have you compared them with the Gospels? No, I'm not trying to. Well, if you, read, if you read these Gnostic Gospels, which I've read, yeah, I've got a list of them here. If you read them and compare them to the four Gospels, they don't mention very, very little, very, very, very little. They don't have anything about Jerusalem. If you read the four Gospels, they mention in detail all the places in Jerusalem. The four Gospels are really the first century and, and the, the Gnostic Gospels are second. Can I just make one point? Yeah. Yeah. We found manuscripts in Egypt yeah. of an ancient rubbish hunt. And the, the Gnostic Gospels are written in uh, small small handwriting, I think it is. It's what, one of the four, I can't remember exactly. But, they're written in a newspaper style of that time. And the four Gospels are written in a style that was seen as authoritative, to, 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 to be read authoritatively. Yeah? So, we... I guess, no, that's the problem with religion. Religion is the history of the people. And it's too, it's like the, it's like the ultimate kind of like, almost patriarchy, because it's like a father figure, and everyone else has to follow everything he does, and everything he does. It's, I mean, I say it's Okay, you said you're a pantheist. Jesus came down and washed Which is good because I can make up the people's I don't have to listen to all the men and people's But how do you know you're not going to do it? You don't want to be bad.
time, he contradicted his philosophy. Not, not just metal, but he contradicted it. You know how he contradicted it. He saw a horse, and the horse was being beaten. Then he went and hung the horse, which was a direct, a direct attack that he gave to Christianity. He contradicted himself. He said, don't show love, don't, don't, don't be gooey like these Christians, they're weak. And then when he saw a horse, not, not what he was saying, he was attacking Christianity for homing in on love. And then he, and then he goes and hugs this horse, because he felt, so there was a contradiction there. I'm not, I'm not like mixed way with that horse, but I just like the aspect of philosophy, which is, you just have to accept it's all like, 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 that you're talking about this God, this God is there going to be judgment with this God? Let me, let me just finish let, let me just finish with this let me just finish let me just finish with this guy let, let me just finish with this guy is there going to be a judgment with this God? because you're no, but wait, wait, to be intellectually honest, you were saying that. As in, you were saying that. Be honest, be honest. You said. That, yeah, but you said, you said that we don't have to worry about the future's concentrating on us. And all I'm saying is, on is your God a God of judgment or not? Is he going to judge? Okay. So you're saying that your God doesn't judge. Now, in the Bible, Paul says, If there's going to be a day of judgment according to Jesus, then, then, you have to, then you have to worry about it. Well, for the sake of argument, if there is a God, the God I'm on about, right? And you come I will come back to you in a second. You can have a discussion with me in a second. But if there is a day of judgment, just for the argument's sake, how are you going to stand on that day of judgment? Pretty well. And would you go to heaven? What? Have you ever lied? Have you ever done anything? So when God judges you, how do you know you're going to stand? How do you know? Well, my, 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 my view is that Jesus took my judgment. And he's the righteousness of God. He died and if I I believe on him. I'm, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. So I have to live a good life. But I'm not facing it on the life. Daddy, I'm not facing it on the life. He gave his life to Christ. So what? Okay, we're not talking to this guy. We can talk to you in a second. No, we can have a dialogue, but I just want to talk to this guy. Yeah? No, no, I'm not trying to catch you. No, we'll, we'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. I'll, I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. I promise you, in one minute, one minute, Jesus Christ died on that cross for us. Now, there's evidence for that. There's no evidence for your position. It's not going to judge. People judge each other. That's all I'm saying. Right, you can come in. God, are you a Muslim? What are you, an atheist or a Jew? You're a Jew. Jesus says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In the Old Testament, God used those terms. God is true. God is the way. You know, when, when, when God led the Jews through the desert, when he led them through the desert, finding the manna, do you remember? Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. The Passover and the bread is all about God. It's about the God. So, so, so what I'm saying is that Jesus used the terms 
Fight. Fight. It was so annoying to many Jewish people at the time of Jesus that they wanted to kill him for this Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Jewish background. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As, a, as a Jewish person, how do you explain this? The prophet Isaiah. He is despised and rejected in man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, but with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have hid every one of his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of his own. How do you explain that as a Jewish person? who wrote it? All right. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah. You, you're out there, you shop. Oh, they're coming out to play today. Oh, yeah. I, I saw Elton a few times. Yeah, I've just been on the phone to him. Oh yeah, he's always asking. Yeah. He said he saw you recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've only just arrived about half an hour ago. And Jason interviewed me. He wants. Yeah. And it says exactly what it says. And he wanted me to hold this camera for a while. So he wanted me to hold this camera. Oh sorry. Oh no, it's okay. Hi, Jim. Yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah. I'm all right. Keep right. cold, are you? June, you know Isaiah uh, 53, yeah. where it says he was bruised for our iniquity, yeah. just that. Is that, that is in the Bible, yes, yes. and it's in the Hebrew Bible. Yes, yes, yes. Do you believe that? It's there. Believe that. Saying, That's what they're waiting for, actually. He's saying, why is there a New, a new Testament? And I'm saying, well, it's the Old Testament, you were. The Old Testament. The Old Testament, the Old Testament. The Old Testament, the Old Testament. 
was that they, they, they kept turning from God. Yeah, but, they kept turning yeah, but in the God. end, if you look at the end of the Old Testament, you look at the last chapter, and he says, he said, you will not see me again. You will not see me again, Jerusalem, until you repent. Until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the I will dash your dash your against us. You will be your name to come. It turns on a lot of this kind of thing. Okay, if that's true, why did they add what if that is true what you're saying? Okay, but, but, but if that is true what you're saying we have to atone for our own sin. Why in, in, uh, in the Old Testament there was the Day of Atonement? Why do you have to be on a ladder to pay all this? There was a Day of Atonement because I was preaching and it's coming to us. Well, you should be coming to everybody's level. Who says? Who says? Answer. Okay, if you say that. <laughs> what do you believe you say? Well, I think uh, it's a tricky one. I believe that. Uh, like this day of atonement, we're all going to have a day of one way to think about the year, about all our sins, and pray, pray to God to save us. Jesus, say, say you don't Jesus is not God. Jesus he was never God. He's not so. the Son of God. Who says so? Do you say so? The Bible says so. To say so. Who Show me in the Bible. But you're saying Jesus is God. Show us in the Bible. Who are you to say so? Because he says so. Isaiah chapter Isaiah. Not, not, not in the Old Testament, it doesn't. It does. Isaiah chapter There's 9. No reference to Jesus in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter no 9. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 9. You're talking about in the five books, the original Old Testament. These are facts. Yeah. You said Jesus isn't mentioned that he's not God. Jesus is not the Messiah. You said Jesus isn't God. Okay. Let me show you. Jesus isn't God in the Old Testament. Okay, who's this? This is Isaiah. Oh, Isaiah, five books of Moses. Isaiah 9? I'm yeah. the original, original, original. But you're talking five knowledge. Books of Moses. Let, me, let me finish. Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter 9. Yeah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Let's talk about the Messiah. Jesus. Yes. Oh, how can they know? Look, the scriptures say the Old Testament. The Old Testament says you'll never know until he comes. He's He's supposed to be Elijah the prophet. He's supposed to be Zimri. Okay. Was John the Baptist a prophet? I don't think. John the Baptist was not a prophet. He was not a prophet. Well, in his time, he was accepted as a prophet. He got, he got his head cut off. By who? Not by the Jews. He was. No, he was. He was accepted by the, the Jews as a prophet. No, he was. He was. Read, read, read it. He's even mentioned in Josephus. Read Josephus. Josephus so mentioned Josephus actually wrote accurately. Yeah, well, he, he says, this guy says, Josephus wrote accurately. Well, he mentions John the Baptist. Not being a prophet, though. Oh, he does. Yes, he does. He does. Who, Josephus? Yes. He said that, that yeah, John the Baptist. Yeah, he was respected as a prophet. Anyway, do you hear the story? Thanks a lot. I lost it for a couple of minutes, but I got it back. Oh, it was me. I didn't realise he was... Um... <laughs> oh, that was before then. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, no, yeah. I got... Uh, the... You are washed in the blood of the Lamb. You are saved and born again. You are clean in the blood of the Lamb. You are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Peace with God. Peace with God. Hope with God. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Peace with God. Peace with the living God, to know God and be at peace with God. Oh, to be at peace with God. To be at peace with Him through the blood. The blood was shed. The blood was shed. 
as a sacrifice for you. The blood was shed as a sacrifice for you. That's why he died. That's why he shed his blood. He died for you on that cross. He gave his life for you on that cross. He shed his blood for you on that cross. The blood was shed for you. The Lamb of God. You got a question, sir? The Lamb of God was shed for you. Press that to stop it, yeah. Yeah, we're recording now, is it? Yeah. Yeah, Just, yeah perfect. Don't go the way of secularism. Don't go the way of drugs. Don't go the way of this world today. Remember that Christ died on that cross to save you, to bring you home. So come to the cross. Know that he died for you. Know that he shed his blood for you on that cross. Know that you can be redeemed today at the cross. My friends, realize that this world is passing away, that there is an eternity, and you'll meet God one day. Are you ready to meet God? Are you ready to meet God? Are you ready to meet your Creator? Are you ready to meet your Lord today? Don't come under the wrath of God. Don't come under the judgment of God. But come under the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lord. Know that he shed his blood for you. Know that he gave his life on our cross. God demonstrates his own love to us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Secularism is doomed. Secularism is doomed. It is doomed. It is doomed. There is no hope in secularism. There is no hope in drugs. There is no hope in getting drunk and blooded. There is no hope in hatred. Secularism is going nowhere. The only hope is to come back to the Bible. Come back to the Word of God. Come back to the cross where Christ died on that cross to save you. There he hung on that cross. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, such love, such mercy, such kindness, such tenderness for us, that he would die for you and me, that he would shed his blood for you and me. How much have you lied? How much have you done wrong? And yet, he died on that cross for you. He hung on that cross for you. You laugh, you mock, you do these things, but he died for you on that cross. He died for you on that cross. And he hung on that cross for you. Every lie that you have done, every swear word, that you uttered every bit of anger that you had. He hung on that cross for you and shed his blood. Don't come under the wrath of God. Don't come under the judgment of God. Don't come under the wrath of God. For without the blood, without the blood, there is no hope. Without the blood, there is no way home. You need the blood to save you. Pull up, pull up. Don't go to hell, don't go to hell. But pull up, pull up from hell. Pull up from the judgment of, of God. Pull up from it and come to Christ. Come to him who died on the cross. Come to him who shed his blood on the cross for you. Come to him who gave his life for you. Come to him who gave his all for you. Don't enjoy lying. Don't enjoy sleeping around. Don't enjoy drugs. Don't enjoy getting drunk at the weekend. 
They will take you to hell. They will take you to hell. But Christ died for your hell. Christ died on your behalf. Christ died in your place. He died in your place and shed His blood in your place. He took your position instead of God's wrath coming down upon you. It came down upon Him. Instead of God punishing you for the things that you have done wrong, He was punished on your behalf. He died on your behalf for you. He died to rescue you from the judgment to come. He died to save you from the wrath of God. So come to Him and find forgiveness and peace and mercy. Amen. 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 I read you Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. For this cause God gave them unto vile affection, for even the woman did change their natural use unto that which is against nature. And likewise also men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in the lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving themselves the recompense of the error that was meek. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, and malignity, backbiters, haters of God, covenant breakers. A gay lady called Rosemary, a lecturer in gay theory, who lectures in America on gay theory, she's a professor. She read this chapter and she noticed this. It didn't pick on gay people singular. It mentions backbiters. It mentions covenant breakers. <laughs> she was struck by it's not picking on any one group. And she became a Christian and realized that actually she was being prejudiced against the Bible. She was saying the Bible is homophobic, but the Bible was not picking on one group. It was saying all sin. So she left it, lecturing in gay theory, she became a born again Christian. That passage basically said it wasn't convenient to be gay. That passage is saying, sir, well, as well as that in modern times it's saying when the modern world thinks it's clever, God gave them over to it. So you can have your gay pride, but God's saying, that's God saying, you want it, you go and have it. You want it, you go and have it. But it's God's judgment on a modern society. That's what it's saying. But it, but, but it says this. It says this. For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation in that same chapter. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for the Jew and the Gentile. In other words, for gay, straight, open relationship, whatever, it's for all of us to save us. So Christ died on that cross with the crown of thorns on his head for the gay community. The Son of God died for you on that cross and gave his life for you on that cross. He shed his blood for you on that cross. And gave. No, I will come in. He died on that cross for the gay community. He shed his blood for you on the gay community. He gave his life for you for the gay community. He gave his all. He took the wrath for the gay community. He took the punishment for the gay community. That's why he died on a cross. He shed his blood for the gay community. Thank you. Thank you. Have you ever lied? Yeah. yeah. He died on a cross for your lives. I don't really care. I'm not Christian. There is a heaven and a hell. Say that again, say that again. People say that Jesus is the Lord, they are infallible. Jesus is infallible. Infallible. Yeah. Right. So by that law, 
pray. Christ never ever wanted someone to pray for him on behalf of the whole Christian community. Well, any sort of faith. No one, no, no, no. You need to be a bit more coherent when you say that. You're right. saying Jesus is unfathomable. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're saying that. Yeah, but by this Jesus, is your no, 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 no. By Jesus being that right? unfathomable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That you preaching for him, you pledging your life to pray for such a man. Therefore, you're contradicting yourself in so many ways. All right. Have you ever heard of Van Til? Can't even Van Til. No, I haven't. He's a theologian. <laughs> And he talks about the uh, analogy of language. And there's a debate in theology and philosophy called the analogy of language. <laughs> language only describes part of God, can't describe all of God. Yeah? But you even have that problem in science or philosophy or reality. Language only describes part of reality, not all of reality. So you'd have the same problem, not just with Christianity, but with your own view of reality. That's that, yeah, yeah. that, is, that yeah. is true. That but, is true. So, yeah. But the point is, for us, we believe that God is a covenant God. And so he helps us to understand reality through language. Language helps us by God being relational. God being relational helps us to have language that is relational to the world and to each other. But everybody has their, I understand, I, I perfectly, so, no, I perfectly so, so, understand so, that you have your own. So, so the simple, the, the simple point, is, I'm talking about philosophy of language. The simple point is, is this, that we have a language, it's called the Bible. The Bible tells us to go out into all the world and preach the gospel. It tells us the wrath of God is coming upon everybody. It tells us that Jesus was punished on a cross for our sin. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but, but have a lasting life. But God also had many other sons. Yeah. The language is there for you to know, if you want to, that Christ died for you. I understand and that. And you I, have to I, repent I, and believe. I have been christened. I was christened. I went to a baptism. I went to a baptism. now. Thank you. I went to a Baptist church for about a good seven years of my life. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. I did all of the praying. I drank the blood of Christ. I drank, I ate the bread. I did all of that, right? Yeah. I did everything for that community, you know? Yeah. Every Sunday, you know, it was praying, it was Bible, it was everything like that. And I perfectly understand that you have your own views. You have, you have perfect right and perfect morals mm. to say what you're saying. And I perfectly respect you your choices, but preaching out in the name of God, saying everything from that Bible can also seem very offensive in a way because it can morally upset somebody. Okay. You know, you know, don't get me wrong, but if I was to come to you and say some extremely things from other, say, I don't know, if I was to take from Scientologists, you know, and aim a bunch of stuff at you, like from them, and I'm just saying, for instance, if you became upset or disgusted with what I was saying, that would be my fault for upsetting you. And by you doing that exact same thing to people of who are like 13 to, I don't know, 20 to 30 years old, mm -hmm. you know, they are also becoming quite upset. Okay. And Can I'm, I come back I'm, not, I'm not saying that you're a bad person, for you, but I just rather you... Can I come back? You've said you're arguing. Yeah, I, do, no, I just want to say, I'd rather you do it in a more, like, not shouting at them, going okay. at them, you know what okay. I mean? Because it is seeming like you are aiming a lot of okay. built-up aggression okay. from the Bible at people. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. You've, you've made your argument. Let me come back at you. Yeah, sure. Have you heard of modernism and postmodernism? Modernism from 1920s to 50s was there is right and wrong, yeah. there is objective truth. So a Marxist and a Christian could be in the same street and they, the Marxists could say, you're wrong to the Christian. Christians could say, you're wrong to the Marxists. They still respect each other. That's modernism, it's mm. true. Yeah. Then, after the 50s, we have postmodernism. That is, there is no truth. All truths are the same. What you're saying, your view, is about postmodernism. If I was preaching this in the 1920s, 30s and 40s, and the Marxist was here, or the Buddhist was here, or the Muslim was here in the 1940s, everyone would understand that he thinks he's the truth, but I have the truth, but we respect each other. Exactly. In postmodernism post says, no, we're all true. Right. So you're coming from a postmodernist perspective. I'm preaching here truth. Just because I preach truth, what I believe is truth, it doesn't mean to say I don't do disrespect them. Exactly. Right? But, every, but everybody... But you're everybody, coming from... Everybody has their own... But, truth. But, everybody has their own view, whether or not you're Buddhist, pagan. Yeah, but you're postmodernist. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying that, like, even with everybody's views, and where everybody is coming from, right? Personally, right, if two men want to pull down their pants and make, have sex, 
in the eyes of everybody else, that is something lovely because them two men love each other. They want to be okay. with each other. Okay. okay? okay. If two straight people want to do it, if two animals want okay. to do it, also, if somebody wants to be needy, what if they want to rape team, somebody? No. No, I'm just going to... No, 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 you've made your argument. No, 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 you've made your argument. No, let me just go. He's made his argument. You've made your argument. If two people who are together and two people who love each other want to be together and be a whole, that's perfectly fine and that is a beautiful thing. You going on... You but you going on by just saying rape then, right? Rape is not... No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Rape is not something no, 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 no. no, no, no. you've made you made your argument. If somebody no, wants no, no. to go out somewhere, wait a minute. you made your argument. to be castrated. Excuse me, sir. You know? Excuse me, sir. You made your argument. You're saying if what two people want to love each other and have sex and the men are men, you've made your argument. But you said if it's their truth, if it's their truth to kick a baby in, According to you, it's okay. You said if it's their truth. No, no. That's if they want to make love, you've just no, 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 you just no, turned no. that you just turned no, no, that around no. saying that right. if they wanted to kick a baby. It's the truth. Where did I where right. did I say is that the such if thing it's truth? their truth to want to kick a is baby? Such truth? I've just said, you said that truth. it's a man no. and man's truth no. if they want to make yeah. love. No, you're, not you're not saying not putting violence to no. a child you're, because that no. is disgraceful. Yeah, but are you saying that truth is per objective or subjective? Subjective. Is it subjective? Right, so you you've lost the argument. If they want to kick a baby, it's okay. You just said that truth's subjective. If it's objective, then you can make an argument. But you can't when you're saying it's subjective. If someone wants to kick a baby, it's okay. And it comes back to that point. There's objective truth. Yeah, but you're just coming out of nowhere going, oh, if kick baby, some of You just came out saying kick a baby. I didn't say anything about wanting to bestow violence to a child. Is gay rights subjective, a person's opinion, or is it objective truth? Everybody has equal it's rights, objective. equal okay. value in How do you world? get objective truth in morality? Right, so it's subjective. You can't get... No, wait a minute, no, no. Wait a minute. You said, you said homosexuality is objective. I asked for the intellectual ground for it, and you said F knows. That is the intellectual foundation that you give. So it's subjective, it's your opinion. It's not my opinion, though. It's well, give an intellectual defense of why it's objective. Give it. It's, it's you're right. allowed to leave people to go and right. do. There are That's other laws in other countries that say it's wrong. It's subjective. Yeah, but we're in England. Yeah. We are in But it's subjective. It's now. subjective. If there are other laws, other nations that say, if, if they're not, don't, don't, don't. he has the right to do that for the police, just yeah. in case. Can I ask you a few questions? Some good questions there. Just stand there if you want to stand Some good questions there. We're going to ask you a few questions, mate, so uh, you can free well. this video online. Probably YouTube, yeah, that's yeah, okay. YouTube. If you want to stand there, if you want to stand there. I'm going to ask you, uh, what happens to your free will and the being being able to do whatever they want without judgment? And if it is God's entourage, what happens to him being omnibenevolent and all loving and loving everyone about it? He loves people no matter what. And also, yeah, it is in the Bible saying that you can't preach, and it is also against the law to preach in his premises, so. Okay, so you're asking about free will. Yeah. Well, people have a choice to do whatever they and want. They do, so why are you preaching against but God? Doing because what they God want to gave do. a law, the Ten Commandments: don't right. lie, don't swear, right. don't commit adultery. Have you ever brought them across? Yeah, I've got them. Right. So God's given a standard. Wouldn't give us God's given a standard. Wouldn't give us the law. Yeah, we've all brought them. Yeah, we've all brought them. Yeah, we've all brought them. Right. Secondly, so there's a law, right? Yeah, no. The law of the land for preaching. The law of the land for preaching. If it's cancelled land, you're free to preach. Right. Well, brilliant. It's not allowed in this premises. This is where we walk. It's actually illegal. No, it's cancelled land. Uh, I don't give a shit if it is. It's cancelled land. It no, we're free. If it's cancelled land, we're free to do it. It's right, fine. Well, brilliant. It says it you in don't the Bible have to itself finish. not no. to preach. No, it doesn't. No, it's a, it says, go read the Bible. Actually, go home. Show me. You've only got three pages Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me where it says. Show me where it says not to preach. Well, sorry, I'm not a holy man myself, but I have read the Bible. No, you made a claim. If you make a claim, you've got to back it up with evidence. So have you. Right. Two Timothy. Two Timothy four two. 2 Timothy 4 2. And really? the Matthew says, Don't preach the gospel to all nations. It's about preaching the gospel. Okay, well, go 2, Corinthians, read it out for them. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Can you read it out for them. Okay, can, can, I, on, on that note, right, can I ask, just ask you one thing? You say in like, all this and all the preaching and then them going, him going off on that sort of things, right? Personally, right, you're preaching that about the gay pride no, today. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I haven't mentioned that all day. It's gay pride. I've not mentioned it all day. No, no, listen. No, listen. No, let me finish. Let me finish. Like let that. me finish. No, let me finish. How long have I been here? How long have I been here? 
long. Did I mention Jason? No. No. I mentioned it because a guy asked me. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 just, yeah. I'm just saying right. A gay person asked me. I did bring it up. Oh, no, no, I understand that the gay person. I understand that the gay person did ask you those questions. And obviously yeah. you had a perfect And right I have a to... responsibility to say what the Bible